الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبة الفلا continuing on in our study of the concise presentation of the creed of أهل السنة والجماعة and I think for the benefit of being concise we're not going to go through every detail of the treaties but instead we're just going to take the malachas or the summary of this concise text because it would take uh, quite a long time to go through every aspect and it would be a bit long and repetitive uh, to just go through all the English uh, text. So the Sheikh began the treaties by talking about important tarifat or important definitions. The definitions of what? Definitions of Aqidah. Definition of Aqidah. So it's a very important for us to know and understand Aqidah. And so Aqidah or Aqd has to do in the Arabic uh, language one of the meanings is to uh, make um, something uh, to tie something or to ratify or to perfect or strengthen something. This is as a linguistic term. And of course the opposite of that is to loosen something. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses uh, mentions about aqt and all throughout the sharia the term aqt is used. As we say aqt nikah. That means to the aqt nikah is when you, uh, the marriage uh, contract. Because it is then when two people, two individuals are forming a bond, the marital bond. So it becomes a binding contract with uh, allowing for both of them, both spouses, to have particular and specific rights over one another, the hakuk, or the rights of one another uh, as spouses. So this has to do with the akt, the akt nikah. The akt that we're concerned about, or the aqidah, refers to the creed. And it refers to, uh, as a religious term, the means to believe not consisting of action. So this has to do with our belief, not just Iman, because we have to know and understand that Ahl Sunnah believes that Iman is comprised of what? Al Qawla Lisan, the statement of the tongue, Wa Amal Al Jawarih, the actions of the limbs, Wa Amal Al Qalb, and the action of the heart. All of those things make up, they make up uh, Iman. So Aqidah is different than Iman in that Aqidah has to do with the means to believe. The means which is exactly what you, uh, what you believe. So meaning Aqidah would refer to things like the Arkan al-Iman, the six pillars of Iman. So as the Prophet Wasallam said in the Hadith of Jibreel, when asked by Jibreel alayhi salatu salam about Iman, he said, "In tu'mina billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wal yawm al-akhir, wa tu'mina bil qadri khayrihi wa shar." That Iman is to believe in Allah, in tu'mina billahi wa malaika and His angels, and His books, and His messengers. Alayhi maftal salatu wa salam. The angels, His books, His messengers. In tu'mina bil uh, and believing in the day of judgment and believing in the divine qadr the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so all of this makes up iman uh, those are the pillars of iman and to believe in those pillars of iman this is a part of our aqidah this is a part of our creed those things which are a part of our firm conviction in something uh Moving on to the Islamic creed, so that refers to those pillars of Iman and all the things that Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah believes in, all the things that a believer, that a Muslim believes in, all of that refers to his creed. And as we said in Dukmina Billahi, the first thing being to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his divine names and attributes, by worshipping him. <coughs> The worship is a part of his iman, but, but the belief, to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that you believe that he has divine names and attributes that are unique to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. That uh, nothing in his creation possesses those same attributes. 
and likewise that you believe that he is the only one worthy of worship in his lordship. So those aspects of Tawheed, that is a part of uh, the creed of what we believe. And the Iman is when we actualize that creed, when we put that creed into practice. The Sheikh then went on, <clears throat> he mentioned some other names which refer to Aqidah, the Aqidah and Creed of Ahl Sunnah. He said there are other synonymous names with the same meanings of the Islamic Creed to, ah, to the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, such as a Tawheed. So a Tawheed, monotheism is also a general reference reference to monotheism. It's also a general reference to the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah because everything goes back to Tawheed. Everything comes back to the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. All of those aspects of creed, they come back to that. <clears throat> and another term which refers to the creed in general is a sunnah. Uh, also, usul ad deen when you hear uh, references to usul ad deen that this refers to the usul, meaning the asl, meaning coming from the, ter the term asl, uh, or foundation. When we say usul, usul, that is the plural of the term asl. Asl, usul. And that has to do with all of those things which ref refer to the pillars of our religion or the foundation of our faith, the foundation of our deen. Deen referring to uh, religion, the foundation of Islam, those pillars of Islam, those things which make up the those points of creed which refer to the foundation of the whole Islamic religion. And likewise, another term that you find that the Salaf referred to uh, as, uh, and beginning with Imam Abu Hanifa, referring to uh, Al-Fiqh Al-Akbar, uh, also Al-Sharia, and also Al-Iman. So I'm going to uh, spend some time because I think this will be beneficial for us in relation to gaining uh, a stronger sense of knowledge about these terms. So, a tawheed. So, if you look back to the text of, um, some of the texts of the Salaf, you'll find that they wrote about these terms, uh, tawheed, that they used the term tawheed, you'll find in Fiqh al-Akbar by Imam Abu Hanifa, which some of the Hanafis or some uh, say that it's, you know, have doubt, express doubt that this is a text of Abu Hanifa, that this is uh, narrated on Abu Hanifa, or that this is his text, but much of Ahl Sunnah attribute this text to Imam Abu Hanifa, and he was one of the Itba'a uh, Tabi'in, at least, and some say he was a Tabi'i, that he met uh, Sahabi, and or that he lived at least during the time of some Sahabi and Allah رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين. And with regards to this, uh, as we mentioned, Fiqh al Akbar was a name. There's a text referred uh, that has the name Fiqh al Akbar. And this Fiqh al Akbar, and I was just listening recently to one of our Mashaykh, a Sheikh. Uh, alhamdulillah, we had the the benefit of studying with in Medina. Sheikh Abu Salah al Afghani, Allah Ta'ala, he's very active in his dawah in Kuwait and in the UAE and so forth. And the Sheikh mentioned in his lecture, he was talking about Aqidah, and he mentioned uh, about Fiqh al Akbar. And this was very beneficial. That Fiqh al Akbar, uh, that the, if you translate it literally, so we, we're saying the Fiqh, uh, the greater Fiqh, Fiqh al Akbar. Meaning that there's a greater fiqh al-akbar and then there's a fiqh al-askar. There's two fiqhs in, in, in essence, if you want to, to describe it, that the Salaf uh, referred to. Fiqh al-akbar meaning the fiqh of aqidah and usul ad deen Meaning that the creed is the greater fiqh. Unlike what you have a lot of Ashadis uh, of this time, and I've discussed with some Ashadis and some Sufis, and they'll say, you know, uh, they'll emphasize the importance of a fiqh, which is incredibly important, the text of fiqh, of jurisprudence. But it seems to me that you find that they belittle the fiqh al-akbar, 
and also they deviate in the fiqh al-akbar because they take a creed where they distort the divine uh, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they emphasize that you, you need to know, to memorize from a madhab. You know, for example, a particular individual that I knew, he was uh, memorizing some text of the Maliki madhab, which is a great, uh, great feat. It's something which is mashroor and something which is desired. However, when it comes to matters of creed of the fiqh al-akbar, this is where he and I had our would have our discussions and our debates about these issues and where you found weakness it, because this had to do with creed. But his, his emphasis was in, in memorizing the Maliki uh, Medhab text regarding jurisprudence. So the Fiqh al-Akbar refers to creed and aqidah. The Fiqh al-Askar refers to the jurisprudence, which is also major because it forms on how we practice and practice our deen, but the creed, the fiqh al-akbar, is how we understand, and it refers to our aqidah, and it refers to tawheed. Likewise, and we mentioned a, a tawheed, and a sunnah, and this is why you find in a lot of the books of the Salaf, you'll find, like, Imam uh, uh, al-Sharia, uh, by, by, by Imam al-Ajuri, al-Ajuri, uh, uh, you'll find uh, uh, a sunnah uh, by Imam al Khalal. You'll find uh, many a'imma that they refer to their books as a sunnah. And you'll find in some of the early texts that they refer to the sunnah as the whole deen. Unlike the, the way we talk about the sunnah now, we talk about those actions which are nawafil, you know, that are extra. Uh, for example, extra prayers, or did you pray your sunnah, meaning that did you pray the the rakatain after maghrib, or did you pray the four raka'at uh, before dhuhr. We refer to sunnah in that respect, and also you'll find the more contemporary fuqaha, uh, the ulama of fiqh, that they refer to the sunnah in that respect. So sunnah, it has different meanings, but what we're concerned about right now is how the early, how the Salaf used to uh, speak about the Sunnah, they were res uh, referred to the Sunnah for them meant the whole, uh, all of Islam. And this we can find in the statement of Imam al-Barbahari, and I'll try to uh, see if I remember uh, the statement, but he said, al-Islam huwa Sunnah, wa Sunnah tu hi al-Islam. That Islam is the Sunnah, and Sunnah is Islam. Letting us know that this is how the Salaf used to refer to the Sunnah. The Sunnah for them was all of Islam. All the things that when they referred to Sunnah, it meant all of Islam. So that means what? That means it, it was inclusive and first and foremost a reference to Aqidah and Creed. Also, from the names that were mentioned, we mentioned Fiqh al Akbar and we mentioned a Sharia. And as I mentioned, uh, a Sharia, and let me see. Uh, I have a copy on the right. Uh, a Sharia by Imam uh, <coughs> by Imam Al Ajuri, uh, which is a, a very famous classical text of, uh, and, and many of our ulama of Ahl Sunnah, the Salafi scholars, contemporary Salafi scholars, they teach this book, and which is a hadith book of. Comp uh, hadith and, and, and athar of the Salaf, you know, uh, statements of the Salaf and, uh, you know, the Tabi'in with Tabi'at Tabi'in about uh, the Sunnah and about different aspects of the religion and showing us how the Sunnah for them included Aqidah, it included Creed. So this is very important for us to understand and I think in order to keep our, our durus uh, very short we'll stop there and hopefully it'll be uh, beneficial for us and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam